that working? Is this recording? Yeah, it's recording. No, hi, hi, Justin. Um, ju Dustin, D Dustin, <laughs> not just. So, so your name. <laughs> Starting um, off all great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the um, yeah. No, thank you, Dustin, for um, coming on the podcast. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. But um, but yeah, I just thought I'd ask, like, kind of, how did you get into like BMX and what what inspired you to get into to BMX? Because I, I saw um, you got some really great videos on on your uh, socials. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. So I'm 35. <laughs> just to lay that context, but um, I've been <laughs> I've been riding BMX since I was 14. So it was like yeah. Around, um, like around 1999 or something like that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've just been riding uh, ever since then. Uh, my, one of my best friends from high school, I saw him, like, he, him doing it first, and then uh, I just kind of, like, joined and then brought me to my first dirt jump and jumped it. I didn't die. So I was like, <laughs> man, this, 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 that, that felt great. Like, it just that's such an adrenaline rush, and uh, I just loved it. And ever since then, it's just always trying to just learn more from it and, like, uh, just kind of, like, I guess – chasing that rush just like just learning something new just felt cool to me and yeah, yeah just been doing it ever since then no, that's awesome man like um i saw like some of your videos and i'm like damn like it's it's it looks easy it's, it's a lot easier to watch it than actually carry it out and do it yourself isn't it like De yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> like um I used, to, I used to love being like um going around on skateboards and bikes you know, like when I was younger. Um, but yeah, it's, I suppose it's pushing out your comfort zone, isn't it? You're, you're constantly seeking that next, that next thing to push you, for you to like grow, isn't it? To develop. Yeah. yeah. Like um, I recently like just thought about how it's pretty much one of, it's almost like, I guess the way Gary sees entrepreneurship, but in like a physical way, like you just, always trying to do new tricks and like it doesn't always work out you fail a lot you fall a lot and just once once you get that trick like it just feels like a huge accomplishment but then there's always something harder like on the next level to like try to aspire towards mm. so it's a lot of it a lot of it is a mental game in my opinion um you gotta yeah. really be like in it and be like like not want to quit uh, that's really been tough. Like that's a battle, like a mental battle. I face a lot. Like even the other day, like I was riding and just trying something that I've done so many different times, like in the past, but just couldn't pull it. And it just caught to, I mean, it's, it sounds all like rah, rah and cheesy, but like towards like the end, I had to really decide like, should I just move on and give up or should I keep going? And it's just something that's always constantly going through my head. Hmm. Yeah, because I suppose like you could spend a couple of hours trying to get that one that one shot, that one take. And if you've like fallen over or smashed your arm or your head or yeah. whatever, like 50 times, you're aching and you're like, do I still want this shot? Right. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I guess it gets, I mean, for me at least, when I fall, um, as long as I didn't get like, terribly injured then i'm happy like i'm, I'm yeah. not like complaining i'm just like thank god i didn't like break my face or my teeth yeah. or something like that but um like if it's just a scratch i'm just like whatever and then it's either if it's bad enough where i'm like eh, tomorrow's another day or just keep going basically yeah yeah no exactly it isn't it like um you must see some like massive like impacts on people sometimes like you've probably seen other people BMXing or skateboarding and seeing them fall over and think, you know, geez, like, that don't have to be me. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen, like, really permanent injuries, or not, like, in person, but, like, yeah, yeah. There's, there's been some pros that really have gotten injured and, like, it really, like, completely changed their life. Like, they can't ride anymore, um, which is terrible. Mm. but um and but you can't I mean you can't also can't let that stuff discourage you i mean yeah i try to be careful as i can because I, I, mm. I obviously i don't want to get hurt um yeah but it's just something that does run through your mind like you just gotta 
be careful and not and realize you're not invincible and yeah crazy things can happen so um yeah it's there's a lot of just little factors and things you gotta think about all the time yeah no exactly isn't it like it's even like driving isn't it like you could be driving a car and you could have an accident so yeah. it's it applies to lots of different things in life for sure um i i remember back in the day remember dave mirror mm-hmm. on on the playstation when playing the old playstation game dave mirror yeah yeah um i, I still play <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but um I, li- I like your new bike i saw on your instagram you got like a new bike yeah yeah um, i just yeah i used to actually have that f- same bike like three years ago um yeah, really, yeah. Uh, i tr- wanted to try something new uh, i rode that for like two years and it just wasn't it was just wasn't feeling it um at least like the size i didn't like so then i just went back to the same model but it was like an upgraded model of like what i rode three or four years ago and yeah I really like it that's awesome man so do you like um do you do it like every week or do you just do it kind of like when you can't like um much? i mean i recently just got back on because with the covid quarantine and stuff i just wasn't trying to leave the house a lot yeah yeah um, and it just the weather wasn't right either so it was just an excuse for me to kind of really put it yeah. off um but the new bike feels so much better so like i've i've been trying to go out more i'm probably gonna go out after this uh, I rode yeah, yesterday yeah, yeah. and then rode yeah, last yeah. week, but my muscles are like not where they used to be. So it's like yeah. it's sore real quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, I suppose like the impact as well, I suppose you do kind of like, it's a, probably a good form of exercise as well, isn't it? Cause you're constantly um, lifting, jumping, moving. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like I also like, so I train in Muay Thai also. And oh wow. I don't feel my, the same muscles as when I do like BMX. Like, oh wow, serious! It's so interesting. Like, so many different muscles like hurt that like I never really, I guess, use in yeah, other yeah. scenarios. And yet, when I do Muay Thai, like other muscles hurt there. So it's just, it is interesting. I mean, I'm trying to figure out a way to like work out the right muscles now, just because like, since I only ride once a week, pretty much. Um, I just need to do something to like keep those like mm. physically active in like those areas. Yeah. It's our, it's our balance, isn't it? Balancing it all out different areas. Yeah. So like as well with um, like working for Gary Vee, did you, did you ever like think you'd ever work for, for being a media and, and Gary? Like, I mean, it must've been. Uh, I mean, it was like a dream of mine. Um, yeah. So like uh, just to like lay a little bit of a backstory, um, in 2016 is when I first discovered Gary. Um, after hearing him for a while, I decided to quit my job, my, the job I was at, because I hated it. I was really like not happy there. Mm. Um, I decided to try to do the YouTube thing. I did that for two years, thinking maybe in 10 years uh, I could work for Gary V. Like that was kind of like my goal, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. The opportunity came up two years after I was like being a struggling YouTuber, which I still am <laughs> not saying I was successful. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, I was like struggling a lot. And then I saw the opportunity to apply for a, a content creator position for Gary. Um, got rejected initially. Uh, then they hit me up again, I guess. Cause I was just like on their, like the list, like, se- yeah, their second, level list of like let's try again um went in for an uh, interview gave me uh, andy he's our director for team gary he gave me a homework assignment um i sent it in emailed it back never heard from him <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was probably like five months after i first applied so then i figured okay i guess i i messed that up and i just can't i'm not good enough um, and then just randomly he called me one day when I was out filming for my channel and he's like, Hey, uh, are you still interested in the job? And I was like, uh, yeah. He's like, can you come in tomorrow? I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> so then, wow. yeah, I just, uh, that was like eight months after I first applied and Damn. a month. So like 
the deal was that they would just, since I, I had like no video background or anything, like not professionally, like I, I just did everything on my own kind of and learned on my own and just did like, I guess, amateur stuff. I never worked for anyone. And hmm. um, so then I think because of that, they like gave me like a month trial period basically to see if I'm like good enough. Um, I just, that first month, I just like put my head down, just worked as hard as I could. Um, I was definitely nowhere as good as I am like now, as far as like speed. Hmm. But, uh, yeah. Like uh, Andy, like he, like they liked my work. Andy was happy with me. So then he let, they, uh, let me stay on for a, it's called a resident position. So it's yeah. kind of like, um, it's like a, not a full-time employee, but uh, yeah. did that, did that for like, I think six months after that first month. So seven months of like, pretty much not being a full employee yet. And mm. then after that, got a full-time hire and just been there ever since. Damn. Yeah, it's been a process. Wow. I mean, it's only been two years since that, but um, <laughs> it's like the longest two years of my life. Yeah. Now. Not like because, um, just like a lot, like a lot of experiences in that two years. Like, yeah. That two years felt like five years as far as it, all the information going into my head. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> That's so, that's so inspiring though. You know, you're like, um, your story and how, you know, you applied and, you know, taking that, taking that leap, isn't it? Taking that jump into the unknown and just giving yeah. it a shot, you know, and yeah. even like, you know, the odds might seem against us going with what you desire, isn't it? And then yeah. that, that waiting and that process and that time, that time period of gap. And then going into it, you know, like you said, like you said, you wasn't too experienced in, in doing that, in mm -hmm. video uh, editing, like professionally, and just immersing yourself in it and just learning it, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, like, I won't lie, I wouldn't say like, oh, I was, I had like, I wasn't positive the entire time. I, there was a lot of yeah. times where like, I really wanted to quit or just be like, maybe this isn't happening mm. or maybe, maybe I should just get a job again. And I didn't do that, not because I believed in myself, to be honest. Like, I did that because I was ashamed of, like, failing again. Like, oh, man, this didn't work out. Like, like I suck. Like, that's how I felt. And I, I was like, fuck. Like, I don't want to get a job again because then it's like, everyone's like, oh, see, he couldn't do it. He sucks. Like, mm. I, was, I was very self-conscious about that. Whereas now, like, I wouldn't care. Like, I would just do it like, and like, I'm much better now as far as like not caring about like what people think or like, yeah. trying to, like please people. Mm. Um, not perfect still like nowhere near like Gary V's level, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, like I'm trying all the time just to get better at that. Um, yeah. But yeah, like those two years, it was, it was tough. Like it was a, it was really like a, a struggle for me. Uh, especially when like pretty much nobody supported what I was doing um, yeah, except, yeah. My, except my current, my current girlfriend. She was the only one that really was there for me the whole time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's been like, do I recommend it to other people? If you're really miserable? Yeah. Because it's just better than being miserable. Um, and especially it's not impossible. I mean, look at me, like I was, I'm nobody. Like I was still like somehow able to do it just cause I, I really do love editing. Like that's something where like my self-awareness came up long. Like I thought I wanted mm. to be a YouTuber and a vlogger and like, uh, like the na next Casey Neistat, like that's what I thought I wanted to be. Yeah. And, then, but then I was just like realizing I wasn't such a huge fan of like the whole being in front of a camera or just like talking about myself like too much. Like I wasn't really into that. Yeah. Yeah. But when I was editing, I just loved editing so much. Like I would do these like edits that I for my YouTube channel that mm. were probably like a three minute video, but I would spend like six hours on it and just not, not be stressed out at all. I'm like just having like, I wasn't like complaining. Like I was enjoying actually editing the entire time. And like, I wouldn't, like I wouldn't eat not because like, um, like I was trying to starve myself. I just didn't care. Like I was just in such a zone that I was yeah. like, man, like I just want to finish this. Cause like, this is like, I really want to see this done. 
and yeah, it was just yeah. like dedicated to like wanting to like work on editing um so wow. yeah like i think everyone just needs to kind of like find what they really enjoy and mm. the only way to do that is to really like take that leap of faith in a way like because you're not going to know by just thinking about it like you have to try things you have to see if maybe you like cooking a lot like maybe if you're really really good at cooking you have no idea but if you don't mm. try it then you have no idea yeah so, or maybe you're just really good at sewing i don't know like maybe you're really good at embroidering and you can make that into a business or something um or even like a youtube channel like if you can just do some cool stuff like making cool designs like but you got to try that's the only way mm. that's i mean that's my advice for anyone that's listening or watching this <laughs> yeah no i i completely agree with you and i think like you've got to try and just throw yourself into it haven't you you might discover something that you didn't know previously before mm -hmm. trying and, and I, I think, think yeah let's go ahead no no you carry on it's fine it's fine oh i was gonna say like i think the reason people don't try is because they're afraid of failing and i completely understand because i like i was so afraid of failing but i was also kind of like delusional to be honest like thinking like when the when i tried to do the youtube thing i'd be like oh okay in one month i'll have like 100 100k followers no problem <laughs> like i'll make that happen <laughs> like i, I yeah. was really stupid and naive about that um mm -hmm. not realizing how hard youtube really is yeah so like that is something to think about too but don't let that discourage you at the same time um you got to try at least because mm -hmm. then thinking about it regretting like it's just kind of like thinking about like oh you should have asked that girl out and then you never did and you're like yeah oh. and then you're just thinking about oh damn all yeah. these years i could i could have <laughs> asked her out or something like that it's like <laughs> you should have just done it like who the hell cares if you should said no you know like, yeah that's it's kind of like that same feeling yeah no i i think that's a really really good point and i think it's so true isn't it? you've got to take that leap and just just try because like you said that regret and that burden of not doing is far heavier than than you know trying and failing or yeah for real yeah i feel you on that like um I, like you're saying like your your videos and you just throw yourself into it and you spend hours doing it and like mm -hmm. you said that's your like you know when you're passionate about something you you feel it and you want to see it through and i, I watched like one of your clips today and it's the, the i saw how you broke it down the edit of it and it was like the bmx no the way, i think you did it where you jumped you jumped oh, in the yeah, air yeah. and you yeah. pieced it all together yeah and i saw another one with a bmx and i was like how did he do that <laughs> and um yeah it must have taken hours but it, it pays off in the end because it's enjoyable for people to watch for sure. Plus like you're that, pushing yourself. Yeah. Like that, like just making that, like, even though it was like a 10 second video, um, I mean, it took me a couple hours, but people like really enjoyed it and I enjoyed making it. So I was like, mm. and it was just like something new. Like I saw that, I first saw that like, um, thing like that style on tiktok i just saw someone do it with like gymnastics and i was like oh cool maybe i could do that with bmx tricks and then i just was like trying to break down how he could how he did it and just try to figure out in my head like okay how can this be done and then i just kind of i just figured it out basically yeah no that's awesome and it's paid off <laughs> yeah i mean yeah i mean i feel like like I'm 35 and I feel like I'm, I seriously do feel like I'm just starting. Like yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a long way to go before I'm like anywhere yeah. near where I want to be. I think that's the thing with age, isn't it? People can worry about their age and it's like, I, I listen to Gary a lot and he says like, you know, you're still young, you know, like four years old, you're still young. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> even older, older. I mean, time, that's the thing. I mean, age is you know i think you're as you're as young as you feel and i think it's just a number like there are people out there who start lots, lots of famous people who start out quite older on later in life yeah definitely i mean there's actors that started when they were like 60 years old and mm. they like killed it you know and then now they're yeah. like super famous i mean i don't know them i only know like one off the top of my head was from yeah. like Sein seinfeld like it was just uh, Jerry's the guy that played Jerry Seinfeld's dad in the show. Like yeah, he, yeah. 
he was like a retired cop and then just decided to start acting at like 65 or something like Damn. that. And, and then now everyone knows him as Jerry's dad. Like, at least like people that watch the show. So it's like, yeah. like anything. I mean, yeah, you can do anything at any time. And I think people are like in a rush. Like, I, feel it's, I felt the same way when I was 20. Like, I just feel like, oh, I got to get my life together before I'm 30 years old. And it's mm. like, like, when I look back, like I didn't do anything when I was in my 20s. Like I just partied and drank and just like <laughs> worked work the job. Like I didn't do anything. And like, so it's like, you really can do that. And like, you can just change everything around whenever the hell you feel like it. Mm. I mean, so it's just really about just being happy. Like just being like, satisfied i guess with what you're doing if you're satisfied and you're not complaining then mm. i mean you're you're good to go like who cares what everyone like what everyone else says but uh yeah if you're just not satisfied with what you're doing then just try something like mm. and don't think like there's a time limit on it either like you can start whenever you want like mm especially if it's not physical, like obviously you can't start as a UFC fighter at 50 years old. That's a little bit tough, but yeah. Um, but like there's, I mean, there's other ways still, even if you did, let's say you wanted to get into the, like something like that, you could always become a manager or a coach yeah, or, yeah. or a referee, anything like there's something, mm. there's some, there's always something. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think, like you said, there's always another avenue, isn't there? If you want it to work out, you'll make it work. If you're willing to put in that work. And like you said, if you're passionate about something, but like if you can't be a fighter, there are other avenues within that. And I think as well with like what you were saying earlier, it's that process, isn't it? And I think that is something that I've, I've learned recently the past couple of months with podcasting is the process i i like to get hit the ground running and get results straight away and like i've had to really learn to be patient and like you know listen to what gary said as well is you know consistency and patience um and just yeah enjoying the process isn't it and like from when you started at you know vayner media and where you were previously to where you are now you know it's you enjoy, you must look back and enjoy that process to see how far you've come. Yeah. I mean, it, I think it's a little bit more than the process itself though. Like I think there's like people that don't enjoy the process. There's something deeper behind that. Like for me at mm. least. Yeah. I didn't, I, I would have enjoyed the process more if I didn't care as much about other people's opinions. Like, yeah, I was having a tough time with my parents. Like they were like, Oh, why don't they're either saying when's this going to happen? Or like, why don't you just get a job? And it's just like that pressure was like, not helping me. Yeah. Um, same thing with my friends, like just thinking like, Oh, uh, how come when's the next video or how, how come it's not popping off or something like that. And it's like, mm. So for me, at least, like just caring about other people's opinions was definitely something that didn't help me enjoy the process as much. If I didn't care about that, the process would be a lot more fun. Yeah. Um, so that's just something that I think, and I'm sure, I'm sure I'm not alone on that as far as like just thinking about the pressure or like what other people mm. think mm. and just trying to like, you know, please your parents, make your parents proud of you kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And that's something you just got to kind of think about or put aside or just use as motivation if you want to like kind of, because like, I've been hearing that a lot of people where like a lot of people's parents didn't believe them and it's kind of like, all right, I'll show you. And mm. it's like that kind of attitude. I mean, yeah. it can be a positive and negative um, as long as you don't resent your parents. Yeah. But um yeah, you can I mean that's kind of like how I used as motivation, I think. I just kind of like, mm. all right, I'll prove it to you guys. Yeah. Like in, the, like in a in all the way in the back of my head, I think at least that's yeah. what I felt. Yeah, no, I I I completely agree and I think that's a really good point and I think it it is difficult not, you know, to to not worry about what other people think because I think we can all experience that on some degree. I like I've I've definitely experienced that. Like mm -hmm. I've definitely, you know, I, I used to want to do this podcast two years ago. 
but I was worried about what other people thought about it. And even now, I have people saying to me, "Well, why are you doing that? You know, where, where's this? What money? How much money are you getting from it?" I'm like, "I'm mm-hmm. not being paid." Though it's always around money, I'm yeah. like, I, "I don't. I'm not doing it for the money." You know that that may follow one day. And and people like you said don't understand it if they're on that other side. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, like yeah, for sure. People, um, but yeah, you've just got to like believe, like keep see it through because you're passionate about it, isn't it? Yeah. I mean that, like you said, the whole like, Oh, when's this, when you're getting money or like that, that's another thing that just kind of like, it's another pressure that you got to like not care about. And mm. like, I've, I've had that too, where people are like, Oh, you make any money off the YouTube yet? And like, no, they're like, Oh, and then it's just like, you feel that like condescending, like yeah. <laughs> kind of feel. And that's just something you got to also, be able to like take and yeah it's tough like i just completely understand it's tough like i went through that and mm. but you just gotta have faith i guess in a way but also know like when it's hard it's hard to know like when is the right moment to actually keep going or give up mm. but it's just something you gotta like you really have to have self-awareness about it like mm. i think also just getting better is Mm. a good idea like you just got to get better like you got to critique yourself but not be too hard on yourself that way you know you're getting you know how to get better Mm. um but yeah just that outside pressure but as you were saying is just um just another thing you got to deal with which is hard um yeah no it's definitely yeah i mean i think it's i think it all kind of comes together and it's kind of it's kind of all part of it isn't it in some way it's all what it's it's all part of it in some way, isn't it? So, like, like, that's what I've, I've realized with some things. Like, I'm like, it's all part of it, you know. Um, I, I can put quotes out there or I can do things and people can almost try and correct what I've put out there. Mm-hmm. I, you have to, like you said, that's, it's learning not to let that in too much. Yeah. Um, are you okay for time? I know we're half an hour. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm you, good. You, yeah. Um, so, wait, wait. Um, so you, when did you start this podcast? I I started uh, January this year. Th- this year, um, and I've done around 70, 75 episodes or wow. seventy six. Um, yeah, and I think over this COVID period, I must have done about nearly fifty or forty. That's that's awesome. Oh, cheers. <laughs> Impressed, very impressed. No, I, I really appreciate it. I, I just like I said, I, I've been out of work with the situation, and I was like, well, let's just kind of, I just kind of threw myself into it, mm-hmm. and just reaching out to people on LinkedIn. I, I took, I think I saw a Gary Vee video or something, and, and uh, he was like, you know, just just get out there, DM people. And I, I didn't do that for a while because I was, just, I hated people saying no, and I hated rejection. Um, because it feels like it feels like shit, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I think after like just a few no's, I just kept doing it, and yeah, it's it's just kind of gained a bit of momentum, really. And um, That's good. yeah, I, I I love connecting with people, and I like I like hearing people's stories, and I, I my podcast is kind of around seeing where people are, why they do what they do, and if the audience can take something from it and apply it to their life, then I think that, that, you know, that makes me happy and connecting with yourself and, you know, seeing who you are and and building connections, you know, I think it's important. Yeah, for sure. Um, But like, I was going to, got a few questions. Um, Who who would you say your role models are? Have you got any like, or anyone you like look up to, whether that's family or like uh, professionally or, um or, or or mentors or it's a bit of a it could be it's not very yeah. straightforward question but yeah it, it, i mean it's not going to be a very exciting answer but it really is just gary gary's the only person that like i mean obviously i work with him and i see him or not physically but i just see him working all the time and yeah 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 that and also just his just look at the way he looks at life is just 
it's like I, I've never seen anything like that with anyone else. Like he really doesn't care what people think. And he doesn't, at the same time, he doesn't, he's just so like compassionate to people or like, mm. like we send him stuff where people are talking. Sh- Can I curse on this? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, like people are like talking shit about him and we send it to see if he wants to like reply or rebuttal it or anything like that. And he's just like, nah, it's fine. Like, let it be. Like he just lets it go. Like doesn't care. It doesn't hurt his feelings. I mean, obviously he probably does think about it, but mm. he doesn't, he doesn't get into that. Like, where like me, if that was me, I'd be like, Oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> like, <laughs> like get into that, like revenge mode. Like he doesn't do that. And it's just like, man, like I would, like I try to do that with like, be like that at least yeah. like control my emotions the way he does. Yeah. And it's just so impressive to me. Like, I don't know how he does it. Like, I mean, it just shows how confident he is. And like, and I just think that's such an amazing thing that not a lot of people have. Like people will say, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm confident. But like, I think not all, I think a lot of people are just like kind of talking out of their ass. Mm. And, um, but Gary truly is confident where he like really is respectful, but doesn't care about your mm. opinion at the same time. And it's just so fascinating to me. Like, because mm. I've never seen any human doing that really. Like, yeah, at least not the way he does. He like approaches is it. it. Yeah. So yeah, like I, I mean, Gary is like my role model. Like, just because he started with nothing. Like he's not like if everyone says, "Oh, your dad, you gave you a your liquor your liquor store," but it's like he, they just don't know the story behind mm-hmm. the, all of it. And it's mm-hmm. like he really did start with nothing. And mm. the fact that he got where he was super late in his life, like to whatever and things like he started Vayner media at 34 years old. And it's like just the stuff that he's accomplished in like the last, what, 12 years or something is yeah, yeah. pretty amazing. It's pretty significant. Yeah. It's pretty... Like, to start from nothing. And it's like, mm. I, I, don't know, I just find that so impressive and mm. but yeah like he I would say him <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no I think I, I agree with you know everything you said um, you know I think he's he's definitely helped me execute a lot as well and like I I think I kind of stumbled across Gary I think a couple of years ago and um, I was like who's this guy I was like oh my god like he's just I've never like I mean I, I watch a lot of people on stage and do these talks but he just like he cuts for the bullshit mm-hmm. unlike anyone I've ever like watched at all and um, yeah like you said he's, he's achieved so much and to come from nothing and to be where, where he's at and you can see he's so driven and passionate about what he does as well and, he, and has such empathy which um, yeah he's, he's unlike anyone that like I said we've seen yeah and just the Um, way he talks is also like like i've seen other speakers and i I, they're not bad they're not like bad people it's just something about them just doesn't feel as genuine as like the way gary talks like it just seems so like real like the way your friend would talk to you and that's kind of like that's what like got me when i first get heard gary um Mm. it's just like man this feels real and like raw and like not full of shit and it's like yeah. that's just how uh, that's how i felt at least yeah, i know yeah. a lot of people don't feel that way like a lot of people hated him when he first heard him yeah or they, they think he's like up to something like always oh, just trying to sell me a book for or something like that and it's just he like really doesn't care about like you don't mm. have to buy anything from him and mm. Like he knows he can make his own money, like just doing whatever hell he does, like just mm. his business. Mm. And it's just really admirable to me. Like mm. just the fact that, yeah, like he doesn't, he just likes people. And mm. I he wants try, to help. Yeah. Like I try to do that too. Like I have some negative things about, like just thoughts about people sometimes. And I'm trying all the time to like just. Yeah not think like that and try to be more empathetic and compassionate yeah. to people and try to understand, put myself in their shoes. I'm always trying to even like, 
this current with like the racist and stuff i'm trying to like yeah like they piss me off but i'm always trying to like put myself in their shoes like think like why are they thinking like that why yeah maybe maybe it's some, just the way they grew up and like just trying mm. to like not be a total asshole about it all the time mm. Mm. and yeah it's just i mean it's hard because it's not it's not in me naturally but it's like mm. i i have to take a step back and just like think like just try to be more like that sense like that aspect of like gary just to be like more compassionate to people even if it's like really bad people like mm. I, I mean obviously there's a there's a gray area <laughs> like but it's just yeah something i'm always just trying to like balance and think about yeah no I, I think like you said like that balance it and stepping you know stepping away from yourself isn't it and putting yourself in the other person's shoes and having empathy it's um you know like you said it's it's a i'd say it's like almost a skill isn't it? it's almost something like a practice mm -hmm. to step away from your current situation look at it from another point of view on that another person's point of view as well and like you said to be aware of your thoughts and your your emotions and yeah to, to put yourself in a, into a different perspective it can be it can be difficult i think it's like i said it's it's it's, it's something that takes time doesn't it yeah, i think it's an ongoing thing i think we're all constantly trying to work on ourselves in that way i think yeah. we all should i think we all should in some aspect um and you know like i said listening isn't it? listening to people and i think like you said um that's something gary v does like he just homes in and like a lot of people just reply they're here to like is it they speak to reply or something like that they don't actually listen a lot of people mm -hmm. um but no like i think he's bringing a lot a lot of good to the world and it's it's needed you know for sure um yeah i think he's really changing the world and he's going like just starting like and he's gonna, yeah i think he's really gonna do something um yeah yeah and i just want to be there also when when it yeah. happens <laughs> yeah no exactly yeah i'll just um do, do you read at all do you have any favorite books <laughs> no just like gary i i hate reading i was never yeah. good at it <laughs> or um any audio or podcast that you like listen to or um I, I mean, I listen to Joe Rogan. Um, yeah. I also been getting into like more like stand up comedians. Uh, there's this one called Bad Friends with Bobby Lee and uh, Andrew Santino. They're just, they're stand up comedians. Uh, I really yeah. like that one too, just because um. I don't know. I just like comedy. I'm, I'm always yeah yeah. So have you ever have you ever heard of Joey Diaz? Yeah. Yeah, he's he's a funny guy. Yeah, I haven't really listened to like he's been on Joe Rogan's podcast, but um, I haven't really listened to any of his stand up or anything. I've been yeah. trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, can we, I think like you said, listen to stand up comedians like is really good. Um, I I wish I wish when I went to New York, I went to a comedy club, but um, I that's that's like my dream, you know, to I me mean, to go to a, like a live stand up like the experience must be like amazing yeah it's cool like i i recently started going to like the smaller clubs like versus um like a big stadium type of thing but it's so interesting like i didn't know um like when they it was just me and my girlfriend that went and they grouped us at the same table like with six strangers and i just didn't know that was like the format of like how like they they just pretty much just, you in. yeah they just cram everyone like doesn't matter if you're with <laughs> your friends or not like they just put throw everyone in there and i was like man this is so weird because like i'm not used to sitting with strangers and like at pretty much like at a table like together oh and damn yeah it's really weird like and then it's like uh hi nice to meet you <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's just kind of awkward at first but then once the show starts it's kind of like you don't care anymore but yeah, yeah that's just something that i didn't know about as far as like the the comedy club culture um yeah but yeah, if you if you come back and then uh, they start opening clubs again, just expect that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
just throwing it at a table with random guys and be like, oh, cool, yeah. cheers, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from England. <laughs> <laughs> they, well, they'll love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I definitely have to. Um, I've got like one more question to like round the podcast. Like, um, what, what advice would you give to people who like kind of like want to follow their dreams or like something they're passionate about? If you could, like, um, well, first you have to figure out what that is. And I know that's hard. So the best way to figure that out is just try things. Like I said before, try cooking, try sewing, try BMX. Maybe you're really good at it. Who knows? Try skateboarding, try surfing, just try it all. Don't be scared. Obviously some physical things are a little bit scarier than others. Um, But try things. And once you find out what that is, figure out how to get better at it. Um, for me, it was editing. Like I loved editing and I just figured out how to get better at it. And mm-hmm. YouTube is like the best source. You could learn anything on YouTube. You don't need to go to film school. I didn't go to film school. You don't have to learn how to do that. You don't have to, you can learn how to edit on YouTube. Um, you can learn anything on YouTube. You can learn how to cook. I look up cooking recipes on YouTube all the time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just figure out what it is that you like. And I know that's easier said than done, but you just got to try things. And once you do figure that out and you really love it, just go for it. And if you fail, you could always get another job later. You could always become a mailman or something. Like there's always something else to like do later Mm -hmm. if it it does fail. That's how Mm -hmm. I see it at least. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree, Dustin. And I think like, you know, just taking that leap and just, like I said, there's no, with, with the internet today, you know, there's, you know, not much holding us back. We can learn things by, like I said, going on YouTube and figuring out ways to get better at something. Yeah. And yeah, especially with the internet today, like even if you can't find it on YouTube, I'm sure there's groups on either Facebook or just your Instagram, like people that like the same things that you like and you can learn from them. Like that's like I did, like, even though I'd learned a lot from YouTube, I also did learn a lot just being at VaynerMedia working with like D-Rock and Seth. Mm. Like they taught me a lot of things that I just didn't know about. Mm. Sometimes that like in person, uh, like one-on-one is a little bit easier to absorb, like as far as learning. Like I know sometimes watching on YouTube videos, I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. So it's like, sometimes you do need that person to like kind of help you, but there's people that are willing to help. So it's like, don't let that be an excuse that uh, you just like, can't, you don't know how to do it. Like there's Mm -hmm. ways to figure out how to do it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I agree. There's always another route, isn't there? There's always, you know, another area where you can learn Mm -hmm. or figure something out. Yeah. No, it's, Justin, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and um, I'm very, very grateful for your time. And I, I think, you know, you're absolutely, you know, doing an amazing job at what you're doing. And I think it's really motivating. I think it's really inspiring what you're doing. And I think like, you know, the things that we spoke about, people can really benefit from it. And I think like, you know, how you've got to where you are and what you're, you know, what you're doing and the learning, you know, is is like yeah really really motivating to to listen to thanks thanks for having me on no you're very very welcome very welcome one second